What's up guys, Alec Mac 111 welcome back to a wonderful 30 degree day in the Midwest where it is super dark and it rained all last night and we don't have any snow because it's like 35, but I have a super exciting video for you guys. I think this is actually going to be the most helpful video that I've ever released for you guys as far as day-to-day -day airsoft kind of stuff. But before we get into that mystery box announcement, they are gone. You guys bought them. You guys did pretty well. You guys did not actually purchase as many as last time. I think that was because there was no gun guarantee and I was really, really good to you guys last time. Um, but those of you that bought this mystery box, I think will love it. This is actually the one that I threw away last week. And as you can tell, it has been washed and it will be burned on the pile of boxes in about a month or so. This right here is my gear bag. If you guys do not have a gear bag, this video is going to tell you why you need one so badly. I got a gear bag officially, I think it was like my sophomore year of high school. I ended up purchasing this bag. I only got this whole thing for like $40. So they are out there, it is super cheap. I got it at like a local swap meet, I believe it's a force protection gear bag. It's made out of some pretty decent Kodura. But one of the worst things about Airsoft, man, if you go into the field and you've ever forgot something, you will know, man, it sucks. If you forgot a mag or you forgot a battery or if you forgot gloves or you forgot something to that extent, maybe you even forgot part of your gun or something, or maybe you forgot your air tank. This video is going to hopefully explain to you guys what I do and the reason why I kind of have all of this set up. All right, so everything that is in this bag is basically what you will play with every single airsoft event or basically like most of your airsoft stuff besides your guns. You can fit guns in here if you want. I choose to keep mine a little bit separate. I will either put them in a gun bag or a case or something and I will keep my gear bag and then I will have my gun bag for clarification. Up first, we have my nine millimeter, I mean six millimeter pistol uh, shoots BBs, yep. Mm -hmm. All right, up first and foremost would be some sort of plate carrier or chest rig system. This is my Cry JPC. This is what I've used every single event for like eight years now. I traded for it way back when I was like a junior in high school. Absolutely love this thing. I'm currently figuring out what back panel I want to use. I've been using a GMR mini map for a long time. I've done a more in-depth video of this and kind of like my loadout. So I'm not going to talk specifically about that. I'm just going to talk about kind of how I situate things. So I put my plate carrier or my chest rig in the left closest, just kind of on top of everything. So the first thing I can do is I can take my plate carrier out and I can put it on. Up next, the only piece of gear I run actually besides my plate carrier. I used to run like a whole belt system and whatnot, but this fanny pack is a fly fanny pack. It's literally one of the best things I ever got. I will keep batteries in here. I keep uh, like my cell phone in here. I will keep patches and stickers for you guys um, that I have in here. This thing is just super versatile and it's always nice because it sits right below my plate carrier as something that I always kind of need to access to. So if I need anything or something quick access, my plate carrier sits about right here, kind of protects the, like the top. So this is super easy. I can kind of access this. I can grab a patch, I can grab a sticker, or I can throw a battery in there that's dead. But I love having something that's kind of right here that I can put everything that I don't necessarily need. Up next, we have my helmet system setup slash goggles. Goggles are always going to be something you need in airsoft. If you do not have a good set of goggles, a set that does not fog up, you will definitely never have fun playing airsoft. I think that was like the first two or three years before I got these ESS turbo fans, I was absolutely plagued all the time by foggy goggles, especially when you play in weather like this where you're putting out so much heat and everything else is so cold, you will fog all the time. The fan in here actually does help a ton. Um, there are lots of other good alternatives to this. These are just the ones I've had for like, again, like six, five or six years. If you buy airsoft stuff well once, you do not have to buy it again. I have an Emerson helmet. I've also gone over this in videos. Absolutely love it. It's I kind of keep this whole setup together. So I'll put everything here. So I know this is everything I need to be safe on the airsoft field and everything that's going to keep my face intact, that I can play at any field, even if it's a field that requires uh, face masks for everybody. I like to wear one anyway, because I don't want to get shot in the face. Um, and then also just like head protection. I actually cut my ear in half really bad one time playing airsoft before I started running a helmet system. And it was actually to get like uh, seven or eight stitches. I'm gonna do a story time on that eventually. If you wanna see the Alec Mack injury story time video, comment below at some point. I really wanna do that. All right, next on to the mag. So whatever platform you're running, whether it's AK, MP5, AR-15 style stuff, you need magazines. For me, it happens to be my M4 mags. I usually run mids and highs. I love the PTS EPMs and the GMP high RPS mags. You really won't find anything else in my bag unless it's something that I will help somebody with or I'm bringing lots of mags for friends. And then I also have high cap of mags for the second gun that you will see in a sec. Another thing that's super important that I keep in my bag are gloves. If you do not have a good set of gloves and if you got shot on the fingers at any point, you know it sucks. I've had these Oakley gloves that honestly need to be retired because they're crusty as heck. But 
I've had them consistently. I think these are actually one of the oldest things in my bag. I think these have been here for like nine years. I had a buddy that got these with the military discount and he gave them to me as a present and I'm super grateful for that. But these boys are crusty. Another thing that is super important that you will need and helps to have a bag are BBs. How many times have you gone to the field and you forgot either BBs or gas and you have to purchase them there? I reuse my tanks. Um, I reuse my BB containers and kind of just put duct tape on them. I think these are my point threes that I've had for a little while. So I reuse the containers and I'll kind of put those bags of BBs that you get at the fields into here. So it's a little bit more sturdy and not as much chance that it'll break and spill everywhere. And then whether you're running green gas or CO2, I keep both in there. Even if I don't have a pistol, a lot of times I'll still have green gas. You never know if green gas or propane, like a buddy needs something or a buddy needs a mag or something. It's just always good to be prepared. And up next, depending on the system you run, it will either be HPA, so you need a tank, you need a line, you need a regulator, and you need batteries. I keep my batteries in this pouch here. I actually have not been using any batteries because I've mostly been using HPA, and I keep my FCU batteries in my gun. But you need to have the stuff that's important. Like I said, if you guys have ever forgot something in an airsoft field, it's just so frustrating to have to go and be like, oh man, I forgot that. Where if you have a gear bag, it alleviates a lot of that, if not all of it. Up next, one of the first more fun things I will get in the primaries later, but this is my Tokimori Custom High Kappa. This is the pistol I have been using. I don't play indoor, so I do not use pistols much. I would love to go play indoor where I can release this baby and just get a lot of the sweet tracer shots and all that coolness and goodness, man. I absolutely love this pistol. Cannot wait to use it. I carry, if I ever use a pistol, I carry one mag in the gun and I carry two on me. I keep them about right here on my plate carrier depending on how many AR mags I'm running. Oh, where did my Alter Ego Alex Mac go? What's up, guys? It's Operator McLovin. We back at it again. If you remember me, uh, whenever you're playing in the cold weather, you need a tactic beer to keep you warm. When your face under that mesh mask, you get that wind in, mm, nobody loves it. Whoa, what happened? I was just gone for a little second. I don't know what was going on. I went and decided to get a little snaggy snack. Uh, but we're back to the video nonetheless. Okay, another thing that you're going to need is a grenade. If you play at any sort of American Milsim event, I love to carry one grenade. I actually will potentially carry it in my backpack if I need it. So if I'm breaching a room, I have a buddy grab it, or I will keep it um, somewhere right here by side my radio that I'll kind of pull it out, pull the pin, and then get a little Chucky Junk in. Hey, yo, what the? Chucky, is it Chucky Junk? <laughs> Another thing that is absolutely essential when you're playing in any sort of high level event, milsim, or even higher end open plays, you need a radio and you need to be able to communicate to your team. I have a Code Red headset that I use. It's just a simple, kind of goes here like a lapel mic. I have one audio point in here and it will connect to my radio, which sits about right here just if I need to access it. If it's a serious event, I will throw my radio on my back because I don't really need to change channels or anything, especially since I'm not anyone who's going to be in like any important chain of command, I'm just there to listen, not really to communicate. On to the last parts besides my gun that I keep in my bag. It is always important to have a safety sack. Your boy actually brought all these for Justin's birthday party. I kid you not, I have like 18 barrel covers that are in here. I also have an e-bike safety sack. Stay safe. You honestly never know what fields are going to require, so it's always better to have one of these than not, because if not, they will charge you like $6 to buy one of these. Thank you, Splatter Park. Last things I keep in my bag. I keep a few extra red rags. Another thing that's just really important, and then it's always important to have a multi-tool. I just have a Gerber multi-tool in here. Um, you never know when a buddy's gun's going to go down or something's going to need to be fixed at halftime, and so I will keep one of these in here. And then it's important, even at open plays, a lot of open plays that I play at, you are not required to have a red rag, but it's nice to be able to just take this. I tuck it in the paracord on my helmet and I just walk around and I get shot just a little bit less as a dead man. And last but certainly not least, you have your shooters. These are my two primary guns right now. They are both HPA. I actually do want to build another AEG build. Um, this is my Polar Star M4. I've done more videos on this. This thing is absolutely awesome. Um, I love HPA. I love AEG too, but I've just kind of been an HPA kick right now. And then this boy is what I'm going to film with next. If you guys have been paying attention for the past few months, this gun I got in an unboxing. And man, if this is not one of the coolest things you've ever seen, it's an FN F2000 that's running M14 magazines. So it's basically like a DMR that has been completely customized by Bingo. It has a round counter back here. It's got a tracer unit up here. I'm super excited to use this and test this boy out. I think this is gonna get some awesome gameplay. And last but certainly not least, I hope a few of you have been wondering what this bad boy is back there. This is my rocket launcher. I use this at American Milsim events specifically. Um, I haven't really used any other events where they're serious vehicles. This boy runs either off a bike pump or a single CO2 cartridge. My buddy Lurch made this way back in the day. Super good engineer dude from Ohio. And this is the Alec Mac 111 noob tube. This thing is so, so, so cool. This thing basically shoots Nerf footballs. You plug it in there, you have safe and you have uh, semi-auto, maybe full if you're going really crazy. And you have this boy and you will take it and you will aim it just a little bit up 
and it shoots if you shoot it straight up in the air it shoots about 300 feet which is insane it's super fun to play catch with the friends but i also can lob these and these boys are pretty accurate you'd be surprised about 100 sometimes 150 feet if i'm kind of hiding behind a tree you can shoot tanks and stuff and it takes about two or three rockets to completely take out a tank it is life-changing in an airsoft event especially mil sim because if you can take out an entire troop transport that is bringing guys to a specific location or is going to take something out you can cause mayhem on the roads with these boys i absolutely love this thing thanks for watching this video guys if you like this please comment below i want to do more stuff like this i want to be able to help you guys i've played airsoft for like 12 or 13 years now seriously i started my first milsim event when i was 13 so i've been playing airsoft milsim wise for 11 years which is kind of crazy the thinking back on it to be honest and i really want to be able to help you guys i think some of these videos that i can do and give you guys advice even if you have just a little backpack man like if you have a backpack that you kind of put your mags your bbs your spring pistol and your famas spring rifle or whatever that can be really helpful so this is alec mac one-on-one i will see you guys later Yeet.